Yes, give the kids something to do. And hey, and they and just <laughs> they, they are so unapologetic themselves. Mm -hmm. Like they don't care what nobody say. They don't care what nobody think. Like I know that for one point in life, like at one time in life, people would want to do something and they'll be so nervous and scared because yeah, of what people yeah. would think about well, it. People like them. Well, people like it. Well, people like them for it. And I hear like they just killing it regardless. Yeah, they see a need and they're fulfilling it. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Chefs React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. Yes, yes. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us, and we new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on, on the road, road to 100k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today we take a look at some Ghanaian innovators and their inventions. Come on, if you are man. new here, click on the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our forthcoming videos. That thing it and that's it. Oh, we watched this one. We, we watched, so we watched the, um, yeah, we watched the version of this one where you guys sent in the video. You're just like, hey, check it out. This is what they're doing out here. Mm -hmm. They're killing it with these vehicles. And now we just seen a whole bunch of new creations that they just yes. put together. Like, I'm just amazed. Mm -hmm. I'm, wanna, I'm ready to see because I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm into stuff like this. Yeah. Actually, I think this song is copyrighted. About that. We can't talk about innovation in Ghana without mentioning Apostle Kojo Safo Kantanka. Kantanka Automobile was established in 1994 by Apostle Kojo Safo Kantanka and incorporated as a limited liability company in 2004 in Ghana. It's not bad. We had to mute it on the video we reacted to, so we know it's using over 75% right. of local components. A Ghanaian car company specializes in the manufacturing of on-road and off-road vehicles that meet the challenging and rugged nature of much of the Ghanaian and African terrain. The objective of the company is to manufacture and assemble cars that give value for money to medium and lower income earners in Ghana, Sub-Saharan mm. Africa and beyond. The company researches, designs and develops cars that institutions, government agencies and individuals will need by analyzing market trends, consumer behavior and service. In 2015, Kantanka Automobile Company Limited was integrated as the first ever Ghanaian privately owned automotive manufacturing and assembling company. The company has already begun producing electric cars. Oh, wow. right, so check it out. If we reach out to this company, right, and we tell them our vision on a certain style of vehicle, they'll be able to make it for us with a good price. Is that how that work or is it like a lot? And it's already made, and we just I select feel, the car. I feel like that's how it works. I mean, they're actually doing it by hand. So, I mean, yeah, yeah you but come maybe with. Maybe they're showing us the back, the you know, the back end of it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we're gonna be. <laughs> the back end of it. That's how we're gonna talk to the folk. Like, yeah, we're gonna. Okay. You heard me? <laughs> Oh, no, it reminds me of the kitty cars. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. It's classical. Okay. It's giving it's giving style, you feel me? It's a Ghanaian inventor based in Takrade in the western region. He started building gadgets at the age of six. He was the best student in craft work at his school and also emerged the first in the regional competition. He was then sponsored by the government to the US for a short period. Abudu has developed several mechanical and electronic gadgets. He has developed a fufu pounding machine, an automatic feeding machine oh. for feeding people who are physically and impaired, like a that. voice transmission and a door alert systems, oh, maze wow. planter, vehicle tracking systems which uses voice activation and many more. 
Abudu has also built unique automobiles for different purposes. He has built a pickup for transporting goods, vintage cars which carry two passengers and many others. All his vehicles are handmade from local materials. One of his major hindrances is financial support. He is seeking assistance from the government and state agencies to come to his aid and help establish a bigger workshop so he could train more people and expand his venture. He also stressed the need for Africans to support each other and patronize locally manufactured products. Yeah, this definitely reminds me of the, the cars we get the kids. Right, it does. I had something to say, but I was just so lost in his art, bro. Like, dude, creative. He came from the age of six, and he decided to stick with some. That's mm. what I wanted to say. Where I'm from in these neck of my woods, I don't really see people coming up with inventions these days. And if mm. they do, it's something that is very, like, how can I say it? It's very beneficial, mm. I must admit, and, it's, and, and it does help people. But what I'm saying inventions is, like, the light bulb. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or the toaster. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking for inventions these days that people don't even come up with these ideas like this no more. But here in Africa, like, since the age of six, he's been working on his craft. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice to see. You know, I can see, yeah. I can think of a lot of uses that the cars that he um, have created can be used for. You know, like jobs and you know small transportation things right that way. right right um also the the little mechanical thing that where we're feeding the child mm. i'm thinking of children who who has missing limbs or mm. sick children or sick people you know that's people nice. who are like mad exhausted and they're just not feeling too well yeah. like things like that can help mm -hmm. them um yeah, man, is this gentleman getting the assistance that he need? Because he said that he's still seeking assistance from Financial. the government. Yeah. That's, man. Yeah. A fufu pounder? I know a fufu like pounder? That. What? Yeah, I gotta <laughs> like that, boy. That's different. What is those? Ooh. Those are who builds affordable houses using plastic waste. Wow. 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 It is reported that Ghana generates about 22,000 tons of plastic waste yearly, with a great portion of it choking our gutters and destroying our environment. And it takes nearly 500 years before they begin to decompose. The issue of plastic waste is of high concern, and I'm wondering why it has become very difficult to ban the use of plastics in Ghana. Okay provide a sustainable solution to help tackle the issue of plastic waste while providing less expensive housing to low-income workers. By so doing, with just one stone, he would be tackling two urgent needs of his society. Yeah, definitely. So what I am seeing and loving about, you know, um, Ghana, right, right. there's the women who um, sew the, the clothes together to try to... Um, Repurpose the clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because of the waste. So it's nice that now someone, well, not now, but someone is, you know, trying to tackle the plastics. Right. And then building homes for people out of plastic. How? Yeah, that's a that's that now that's a pause. Like yeah, like the materials. I'm guessing. <laughs> no, that's crazy. Like mm -hmm. dude is on the next some next level stuff. I would love to see the groundwork mm -hmm. from that. Yes, yes. Then we also had the young. Um, I think there was a company that came that was in Africa who. I'm not sure y'all can help me with this one, but they had the sandals. I think and they that was, was in making, Kenya. Yeah, that was in Kenya, and they was making this artificial work like this. The art. The art, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So that was that was dope too. Yeah, it's nice. Y'all taking it upon yourselves to take care of the best. With I a like bigger that. purpose at hand, though, mm -hmm. to clean up the environment. Right, right. Oh, okay. And 70% sun to serve as a fire retardant in most of his products. He prefers plastic waste from gutters and beaches since they already contain rough soil that strongly binds blocks and iron rods. Boatin is the founder and CEO of Nail Plast. His company won the Green Copy Star Award at the Emmys, and his mission is to create a leading company in plastic packaging and recycling in Ghana. We also have Zambi Mate from Kenya, who was honored by the United Nations Environment Programs 2020 for providing sustainable low-cost construction materials from recycled plastic waste. Our next video will cover innovators across the African Did continent. Did you see it? Which you? Did you see the brother with the leg with the arm? Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this to you off camera, but I had told you that there was a gentleman who created his um a robot who can move his arm off his. 
thoughts. You did tell me something like that. I think that was him. Oh, wow. I, I hope they today. talk more about it so I can have a little more clarity of what I'm saying because I did read a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't want to miss. If you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Frank Dakon is a Ghanaian innovator who invented the water bike to help people living in riverine areas to easily navigate water wow. bodies. His invention comes as his response to children and residents finding it difficult to cross water bodies, especially during rainy seasons. The water bike is made from aluminum, wood, and propellers. Dakon built a water bike to make it safer and more reliable to traverse these rivers compared to canoes. Furthermore, canoes responsible for transporting people, especially school children in the area, are limited. It took him over a year to come up with the concept and its design. Daku's invention could be useful in many other parts of Ghana and beyond, where people experience heavy rainfall or natural hazards like floods. His current model can carry one person, but he's working on... This could be used in... Um... What's Where the was it? It's, our, it's in Nigeria. In? Yeah, it's in Nigeria. What's I know the, what you're talking about. What's the the people that's living on water? Kikono. I forgot the name. I know it's near Lagos. Okay. So yeah, like how they have to maneuver the water through the boats. The children can ride a bike. Yeah. And learn how to ride a bike, although they live in a river city mm. town. Mm. Yeah. I, I mess up with it exactly it's called but y'all y'all get it they can still learn how to ride a bike <laughs> nah you know? facts bro this is a fire invention another mm -hmm. one this is like hey if there's a problem and you have a solution to it you're gonna feed people forever yes and another one that will carry four people in addition to tackle the issue of sanitation dakun has also invented a bicycle that sweeps the streets of rubbish and dust Ooh, i love it Oh, these are the bikes. Oh, okay. The sweeper. Okay. So I think this right here is a sweeper where he made the brooms in the back of the bike and then mm -hmm. he pedal run a, Yeah, sir. Yes. yes, give the kids something to do. And hey, and they and just <laughs> they, they are so unapologetic themselves. Mm -hmm. Like they don't care what nobody say. They don't care what nobody think. Like I know that for one point in life, like at one time in life, people would want to do something and they'll be so nervous and scared because yeah, of what people yeah. would think about well, it. People like what well, people like it, what well, people like them for it. And I hear like they just killing it regardless. Yeah, they see a need and they're fulfilling it. Because it's more they're more passionate. You they, know what I'm saying? About their their home. Mm -hmm. Their mm -hmm. their town, city, state. Let me country. ride around the city with a bike, right? And a and a broom. Mm -hmm. A long broom to it. People yeah. gonna look at me like I'm crazy. Right. <laughs> what is that brother doing? Why are you sweeping the streets like that? I'm cleaning the streets. Build different. of dust master as he calls it is to clean the streets of accra and other parts of the country the bicycle collects rubbish and dust as it rides along the streets it keeps the rider in shape while keeping the streets clean received a national award for his invention from the Ghana Institute of Engineers That's at big. the 2018 Engineering Excellence Awards. I need that for Mardi Gras. Yes. Huh? All, the, all the trash y'all be leaving out. Duh. I'm joking. Child. But the bees and all the stuff, like, pretty people be packed out and then, yeah. like, the streets be left with a little bit of cups and stuff. Yeah, but they, the city workers are real fast when it comes yeah, to Yeah, city cleaning. workers are really fast. Yeah. So.
Richard Quartin's timely invention was critical in the fight against the novel coronavirus. The Ghanaian innovator, who also owns a shoe manufacturing company, invented the solar-powered hand-washing device to help curb the spread of coronavirus. His purpose was to aid the frequent and effective washing of hands without having to physically turn the tap or touch the soap containers to avoid infections. Once a hand gets under the tap, the sensor detects it, setting off an alarm that sounds for 25 seconds, during which an inbuilt dispenser pours soap on the individual's hands for thorough rubbing. Immediately after the 25 seconds, the flow of water is triggered through the same tap to wash the hand. The barrel, which constitutes the base of the device, contains 80 liters of water that can wash up to 150 people's hands before it is refilled. Meanwhile, when the water and liquid soap are exhausted, the sensor detects it and alerts for refilling. This invention has been certified by the Ghana Standard Authority. The certification was carried out in 4 days instead of 21 days in response to the alarming spread of coronavirus. In his case, the government showed readiness to promote, support and encourage local inventors. I like it. I like this idea. Yeah. This is very stylish and very thoughtful for, yeah. for a season. Yeah, I wonder where it was. Like, was it just randomly all over? Right. Or, you know, in well-populated areas or not well-populated? Because, yeah. <laughs> well, I think the idea is, was it all over? You know what yeah. I'm saying? And um, I don't think it's just for, like, just for the coronavirus era. I think this is going to go, like, this is yeah having it just in general because who mm -hmm. i think just keep your hands clean is you know what i'm saying it's purposeful like right, you, need right. to do that. you need to do that definitely like in areas where you eating uh -huh. you know yep yep the park places like that Kelvin Odate is an 18-year-old Ghanaian junior high school student who built a car from scraps. Kelvin wow. doesn't have any formal training in engineering, but at the age of 10, he has already started building gadgets using ordinary things like scraps, signboards, and plastics. Kelvin started building his car in 2017, which took him almost four years to complete after so many false starts. The toughest challenge was acquiring an engine which he couldn't afford at the time, so he had to engage in other jobs to earn himself some money to buy the engine. After Kelvin's innovation went viral, Kantanka Automobile reached out to mentor and help him achieve his dreams. The CEO, Kojo Safu Jr. said, the boy needs a lot of mentoring and we at Kantanka are willing to teach him. Okay. I love that collaboration. It's promising. Okay, what's going on? This is like a helicopter. We're about to do. We're about to do. Okay, here we go. Inventor here we go. and a student at Ashasi University, Ni Amate Amate Fio, has designed and built an Australite helicopter from scratch. During his freshman year, Amate began researching rotary wing aircraft, spending a great deal of his time in engineering workshop. I don't know, so of course, yeah, I could fail. Uh, we're building a car, yeah. but when the helicopter go up and they just say, "Hey, this is not the piece you needed to put," and yeah, going down, then it's going down. down. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, that's a different type of level of knowing. Like you got to know what you're doing for real. Yeah, yeah. Most most people say, "I want to get on the airplane." He said, "I want to build a plane." Yeah, and, and then I'm gonna own it. Yes, yes. Mmm. Mmm. I mean, all the pieces, not a manual, nothing. <laughs> His, His zeal and excitement will push him further to build four more prototypes within a few months. According to him, his previous test has given him a lot of feedback to help him accomplish his goal. Even though he faces challenges like vibrations caused by the centilever design, the engine struggling to get the main rotors to the right RPM range to generate enough to lift because of its weight and Bro, a few other headers. He is so optimistic and will not give up till his inventions are finally completed. The right is RPM that a weed range weed in a, to a generate weed enough in to lift because that's what it looks like. Huh? <laughs> oh, the he trying everything. Hey, everything. Cause I'm thinking. I'm like, how you how you know what parts you need? Mm -hmm. And he's like just putting pieces together. He trying. That's all that matters. He has a it vision. Right, and a few right. other hurdles. He is so optimistic and will not give up till his inventions are finally That's completed. Good. He has also launched an engineering summer school program that seeks to give students practical experience in engineering. Okay. 
Joseph Kualetete is a Ghanaian innovator who manufactures bicycles and four wheelers using wood. Using wood. Okay. His first bicycle, which was made from metal, was built in the year 2007. But due to financial setbacks, he paused and focused on architecture, which was his profession. In the year 2020, Tete created his first wooden bicycle with the support of good friends and relatives, especially the bishop of his church. In the beginning, it was tough, but succeeded on the third attempt and came out with the first product within a month. Now more experience and improved efficiency, he produces a piece in just seven days. Coming up with the concept and design for the wooden bicycle was relatively easy because of his architectural background. He has different models for all age groups. I like that. Yeah, bro, don't stop. Let's I like that. I do. Tete has also created a four-wheeled wooden pedal bicycle purposely for tourist centers. The pedal car, which is a prototype, is also made of wood. It has a seat for two and a pedal to move it around. Tete is confident that with the availability of resources and funding from state agencies, investors, or privately owned companies, he would expand his business and begin mass production. Everything that we've seen so far is worth investments. Mm -hmm. I like er everything, everything, literally. Yeah. I don't see how they not, or how they aren't, aren't going to be able to get out, like, and just, you know, be successful off of this. This mm -hmm. is, this is fine. He's thinking about the tourist industry. See? Yeah. That speaks a lot. Like, for real. I, I see a lot of investors who could invest in this and have this at every tourist destination in the country. Right. In the country. Right. Okay. Ibrahim Smiler, also known as Ibrahim Spider, is a Ghanaian innovator who builds motorbikes and other vehicles with scrap materials. Smiler attended Don Bosco Technical Institute at Ashaiman where he studied welding. Smiler is an innovator and entrepreneur committed to beneficial change within his community. Smiler has built customized motorbikes and other forms of motorized bicycles and tricycles purposely to ease the move. Hmm. I would have thought this came out of a store. Hmm. That's really nice. Yeah, he got it together like... From scraps. ...of people with disabilities. Smiler is ready to pioneer several new life-enhancing devices, but his resources are limited. He wants to expand his business, employ and train more people. He's appealing for support from the government, corporate bodies and individuals to facilitate large-scale production and marketing of his existing inventions and many more to be born. This brings Man, this five, bro. Yeah. That's a five video. Yeah. I love creations. I love creativity, design, architect. Mm -hmm. I just love these things because they push your mind to work and these people like they're really killing it out here. Mm -hmm. They're killing it. They're innovative. And most of them are creating these um, inventions from scraps. That's amazing alone. Resourceful people. For yeah. real. For real. Like if they could do it. What excuse do you have? You know which one blew my mind away? Which one? The plastic that was create, made out of like tile and bricks and yeah. then built homes out of the us. Home. The one for me was the student who made the car and the car, um, the CEO invested mm, in him. Mm, that yeah. was the one that wowed me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, y'all so, got, got some stuff on your hands yes yes let us know which one you like Facts. um not a competition but just let us know which one yeah. you like the most we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us like this video subscribe turn on the post notification bell we have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way as well as our reaction request form is in our description box below we'll see you soon peace, peace.